Okay, um, so yes, welcome everybody to our 13th round now of the CMFI MassSpec seminar. Uh, yeah, it's my, my great pleasure to uh, introduce you today to Cytoscape and like um, show you also some tricks and basically how to visualize molecular networks within like the Cytoscape um, platform. So yeah, this is a, a pretty awesome tool that uh, I think we use extensively for like the data visualization and exploration of, of molecular networks. Some of you may have used it already, so I'm really uh, fascinated by this uh, um, awesome piece of like open source software. Um, yeah, and the email I sent to all of you yesterday, I gave you two links. Um, one for like the download of Cytoscape. So again, it's, it's free, it's open source. You can just download it and, and install it. And then I also shared this Google Drive here with you um, where there's a couple of files that we need for like the exercise today. So other than like the very brief introduction right now, I think uh, most of today's class is all hands on. So if you have not downloaded Cytoscape yet, then um, maybe type this in quickly and download it now. So you can, you can basically like follow the, the exercise. So yeah, you just like uh, get to this page and then there's a, a big download button. There should be also a version for, um, for Mac OS and for, for Linux, you may have like to dig a little bit deeper, but um, it's, it's relatively um, straightforward and it's also like widely used. So like um, a lot of people put a lot of effort in it and a lot of people are uh, using Cyberscape. And then yeah, under the second link, there is like, um, like this uh, um, four different folders, um, three of which contain uh, data that we actually uh, generated like in the previous um, seminars here. So if you attended those, you may um, remember that like, um, yeah, we did like some MZ mine three processing with Robin and then got like, um, yeah, here, um, this MZ mine three output files. Then we did feature-based molecular networking and we got some output files there. And then uh, Kai Dirkov also showed us how to process um, MSMS spectra data. Um, with uh, um, Sirius and we got also like some, some uh, Sirius output files. And yeah, like, so today's goal is basically like to, to take like these different outputs and then um, load them all into Cytoscape. So we're not only using it for um, yeah, network visualization, but also for fusion of like different annotation levels, which I think is, is very handy. And again, yeah, if you're just like um, joining in today or, or seeing this for the first time, so those are like previous, um, uh, seminars that we also recorded and um, it's all in, in the YouTube playlist so in case you want to re-watch uh, it or like explore it, feel, feel free. Okay, so yeah, let's get started with, with Cytoscape. So, so what is Cytoscape? Um, again, it's a, a, a open source software tool developed by like a bunch of different um, developers. Uh, some of them are at UC San Diego. And yeah, it's uh, been around since a while and, and people are mainly using it for network visualization. So you can basically display whatever network. This might be like a, a gene expression profile or like some transcriptomic data, you know, so like people use it for like many different things. Um, in our case, we use it for mainly molecular networks. And yeah, the cool thing is it's, it's kind of like also like an, an open software platform. So a lot of other people are actually like developing different apps, which we may also like get a little bit into later. So um, all in all, it's a, it's a pretty awesome uh, software tool for network visualization. I would say perhaps the tool for, for network visualization and you can like do a lot of like different things. With it. Um, yeah, you can save these networks later in, in like specific like um, Cytoscape files. Then you can like play around with like the layouts from the networks. And also very importantly, we can export um, both like pixel based as well as like vector based graphics, which kind of like um, plug in perfectly to like Illustrator or um, Coral Draw or like some other like, um, yeah, like uh, uh, vector uh, graphic programs, which you can then um, use for, for making figures for, for your paper actually. All right, and um, now let's let's jump in right into uh, Cytoscape. So in, in case you, you've successfully installed it, then you should have like a, eventually like here this button on your desktop somewhere or otherwise you can maybe uh, launch it through your um, uh, start um, symbol. So yeah, basically open uh, Cytoscape and then what you should see is such a window here. 
So this is basically like the, the cytoscape surface and you have a couple of different areas which I will roughly explain. So first here on the left, you have a, um, a network list. So right now I, I don't have any network open. So there's obviously nothing listed, but later as we start creating networks, they should be listed here on the left. Then on the bottom, you have here like this table view where we can actually have tables of like the different nodes of the network we have or of the edges we have. Again, this is also empty, but as soon as I start creating now a network, you will see some information here. And then in the middle, there's the network view where later like the network will be displayed. And then, yeah, also roughly here on the left, you can toggle between uh, network, uh, style and filters, which are kind of like, um, yeah, like three ways or, or three different things to like explore the network then change the style from the different networks. So here we can change colors, do like different mapping types whatsoever in that network. And then the filter button, we can actually explore the network and look, for example, for like specific compounds and so on. But okay, so now this is like roughly like the, the, the surface of the, um, of the program, but what are we going to like visualize? And here I just want to um, uh, introduce like two very important terms for you. This is first node and edge, because this is basically what a network is built up from. And if I would not have a network here, I can just go to file and say new network. And then I can create an empty network, which I don't know, we'll call here test network. And then now there should be an empty network displayed in the middle um, under here, my network tab. I will now see that there is actually a network listed which has zero nodes and zero edges. And then also obviously here under this table, there is no information yet. So now here, an important thing, I can toggle this between edge and node table, uh, which you will see in a second uh, what this actually means. So now if I wanna create a network, like the simplest way to do this is that I just right click into like that um, like space here and say add, and then I'm going to add now a node, which basically is here just such a node in the network. So now uh, this has the name node five. So this is basically like just a, um, a, a generic name. But now here, if I would go to this table here at the bottom and under name, I could double click in there and just give this any other name. And I don't know, like uh, um, could call this Ming, you know, or I could add another node. And then this wouldn't be node six. And then I could call this, I don't know, Robin. And then I could create more nodes, you know, and I could call one Louis. And then, I don't know, maybe I can create also a node here for myself. And I call this Daniel. So now we would have basically here four different network nodes. Um, of course, it's just like single node. So it's not a network net yet because there's no connection, right? But I guess because the four of us are all um, collaboration partners and, and good friends, I could now click on one of those nodes and say add, and then add an edge, and then connect this to another node, right? And now for every relationship between the four of us, you know, I could add edges and then connect basically everybody here in a network. So now, obviously, this is not a spectral network, but this would be rather a social network, right? Of like four people, four friends, uh, whatsoever. But I hope you get the idea that now I can, um, yeah, kind of like display any relationship between any uh, objects or persons or things or, or, or whatsoever. Okay. And now, okay, so this is just like the basic network topology now. So I would have a, a network with four nodes. Now, of course, I can add like additional information, right? So for example, like Robin is right now based in San Diego. So I could like now add here a new column uh, under this create new column bottom here. And then I want to um, create here a new single column. I can use the data, I can select the data type. So I don't know if it's text, I would perhaps use string. If it's a number, I would like use integer or float. Um, and then, yeah, I can like specify this. So this would be the header then of this new column, right? So like then we can say, okay, city. And then, yeah, that's Robin as San Diego. 
specify this for him. I'm in um, Tubingen. Louis would be in Geneva. And Ming is now in Riverside. All right. So now I have added more information to this network, right? And I could basically move on and like add different attributes to the different nodes. But of course, there's also like this edges and this edges like the same way I can add different information. And in order to do that, I would need to toggle between like the node and the edge table. So if I go to the edge table now, the same way as I did it before, you know, I could add like a new single column again with string as a data type. And then I would call this relationship, you know, and then perhaps for the four of us, I would say we're all friends. So I can then, you know, add this um, interactions in here. And now depending on the interaction, you know, I could now color code this different edges, right? So um, I don't know, like for example, um, yeah, there would be now somebody with whom I'm not friends, but you know, I may do not, do not get along with this person. You know, I could like add like a different attribute and so on. And then like, again, this different attributes I can use to like kind of like highlight this at a higher level in the network. And let me just show you quickly how I, how I would do that. So that's when I go here to the style button. And now I can basically, depending on like this different attributes here, um, um, label or, or change the style of the network nodes. So for example, like if I want to uh, say, okay, we're like all in different countries. So I can now here use a mapper with like the fill color for like the nodes. And then I would say, okay, let's use city and uh, discrete mapping. And I can use for every, you know, um, city here, a distinct color. All right. And then hopefully, let's see, what do we have? Oh, let's use this. Okay, so now nicely I would see, okay, that we get like different colors. Um, I can do the same thing for the edges, right? So if I toggle here between node style and edge style, now I could say, okay, um, for like the edge color, for example, um, where would this be? Um, is it already here? Stroke color. Let's see. Um, relationship, discrete mapping. I am now. Let's use one color. Blue, because we're friends. Okay, so now you would see that like all the edges are now blue. So as we only have one type, obviously I can't really differentiate anything. But I hope like with this very simple example, you know, you can like see easily how you can start creating networks in here. So now, of course, this is nice when you want to like come up with a network by yourself. But um, we also may want to like import already relationships from some other data type. And in theory, like all we need to do that to import such a network is a list of um, yeah basically nodes that are connected to each other. And like one of these lists I prepared for you here in um, this folder, basically. Uh, let's see. Um, when you download, like here, like this four folders from um, from the drive link I shared you under Cytoscape Fantasy Data, I made up some fantasy uh, network edges, and that would be under this ed edge table example here. You can open this with like, so it's a text file, you can open it with like an editor or um, also Excel to then, uh, yeah, just like take a look at it. And when I do this now, you will see that uh, once it's loaded, it's super simple, right? We just have two headers, node one and node two. And now instead of like names, I have here given them simply numbers. So this could be, for example, a feature number 
from you know like your your quant table or your molecular network or whatsoever. And now what is important is that basically every time here's a row and there's node one and node three, that means node one and node three will be uh, connected inside of the molecular network um, inside of the uh, cytoscape network. Okay, let me quickly close this again. So now what I'm gonna do here is when I go here to network, I will now try to like import this network, which I generated, right? So I would go click here and say file, import uh, network from file. And now I can like navigate to my cytoscape fantasy data here and I can select this edge table. And then you will see that here like this import wizard basically already recognized like the two um, different columns because this is the only information that is in that file. And then he calls one source and one target. And this is always like this connection, right? There's like a source node and a target node. And, and it's just um, basically how um, this connection would be defined. So now I say, okay, and then it will import this network and da 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 da. Now I have already here my little fantasy network, which contains of, um, yeah, like two kind of like sub networks here and then a bunch of um, singletons. And you can see already as I click on like this nodes, I can like, you know, organize them, I can move them around. So this is really for, um, yeah, I think like visualization purposes, uh, very helpful as I can like change the style. And it's so much more um, intuitive and better than to do this actually downstream in PowerPoint or wherever you're gonna make the figures for your, um, for your paper. All right, so now we have like the basic network here, but of course we also need information for like this different network nodes, right? So now if I would click on one of them and toggle here to my node table, then I would see, oh, actually the only information I have for each of them is here name is this number that was initially provided in my edge table. Now, the cool thing is that this number kind of like is a key for us to add on more information to these nodes. And when you looked at this other file that I provided to you in the fantasy uh, data folder, you see that there's also a file that I called note table. So again, it's also a text file. You can open it in your editor or in, in Excel, for example. And when you now um, look at it, you will see that this is basically a list um, of like all notes I have. So again, here was like this numbers, right? And now in addition to those notes, I now gave them another name, uh, which would be here, um, you know, like a, a chemical compound. I also um, added a smiles code for each of them. So in case you have not worked with smiles code, this is basically, yeah, like a, a string that describes the chemical structure um, through this code. So you can copy paste this, for example, into um, chem draw and then it will appear as an actual structure. And then I also made up here like this fantasy uh, quant information, which could be, you know, like a, a relative quantitative information if this would be a, like a molecular network. So now in order to add this information um, to the network, I again, make sure that I have to select it here and then I go to file, import, and now I am gonna um, import a table from file and then I will select this node table. And now you will see uh, when the wizard here opens that there is this key symbol for node, right? And this is really important in case like um, this would not be selected. I have to make sure to like tell it which column here contains like the, the same names as the networks in my, uh, the network nodes in my edge table. So we really wanna make sure that this here is like the key. So again, for like a molecular network, this would be typically like the scan number um, in your MGF or in your quant table. Um, you know, so that you can like make sure to connect the right thing to the right nodes. And yeah, so now we're just we're gonna click OK. And now bam, it, it imported it already. And I can see now here in my table um, down here that I now have these new columns added. So instead of like manually adding them before, you know, I can actually import this information from a table. Mm -hmm. And this is really cool because this could be now the GMPS annotations. It could be like the series annotations or MS2LDA or you name it, whatever other tool. 
The only thing is you need to have like um, like this key uh, a descriptor that basically tells you what belongs to what, right? So typically we use like the um, the scan number or, or feature number um, from our quant table. All right, so now if I uh, zoom in here, you see already, okay, it now changed the label from like actually like this number to like the name and actually named all of them, okay? So now I could already like explore here this network. But now I can also start doing other operations with it because, um, for example, we have here the smiles code. And fortunately, there are some add ons in, in Cytoscape that actually allow us to work with smiles code. And there is one particular app which um, I would uh, recommend you all to install. And this is uh, the Chem uh, Visualization app. So when you go here under apps, there is uh, an app manager. And then here you could simply type in uh, canvas too, you know, and then I already installed this, but um, you probably don't have it installed. So you can just like click on it and then say install and install this app on the fly. And there is again, a ton of different apps or whatever analysis you wanna do, you can check it out. There might be like an, a right app for you in Cytoscape in order to do this. So feel free to, to explore. Anyway, for us now, this Canvas app is quite handy, again, because we have like the smiles code. So what we can do now is under, again, apps, once this is installed, there should be this Chemo Informatics Tools uh, button now. And now I can do simple things like paint structures on all nodes. And now what this app will do is it will actually draw like small images of like the molecule based on this smile structure on all nodes. And of course, for us exploring chemistry, this might be really helpful because maybe I don't know like all like the names of these different chemical compounds, but you know, if I explore this and see, oh, there are actually like two very similar compounds next to each other. And then there's an other unknown one, you know, with like a certain like delta mass, it really like facilitates the exploration and yeah, um, user uh, propagation of annotation uh, within, within this molecular network. So now, yeah, having here structures is definitely a nice asset. But of course, now we can also do more fancy things with, with those um, st um, structures, or in particular, like the smiles code. And this is, for example, expand the connectivity of our network based on chemical similarity between those molecules. So there is a thing called Tanimoto similarity, which is basically a computational metric that defines similarity of such smile strings. And also this is available through like this chem um, uh, informatics tool thing here. And if you go to settings, you can actually define a given uh, threshold for uh, Tanimoto similarity to be considered similar. So it's typically like a value between zero and one, whereas one would be identical and zero would be uh, not identical. I think the default is 0 0.5, but maybe we want to put it a little bit higher to, for example, like 0 0.7 and then say, okay. And now through like the same tool, I can now create a similarity network using all nodes and using this, um, yeah, Tanimoto similarity score. So now if I do this, it will um, start calculating a little bit and then ba-bam, ba-bam, uh, we got a new network here in which now actually my fantasy edges are removed, but now I have a bunch of new edges, which actually would reflect now chemical similarity and not, um, yeah, like the random similarity I have assigned before. So now we can zoom in you know, and then look at the structures because I can draw them already in here through like this canvas app. And then I see nicely, oh, indeed, you know, there's like a benzyl ring and it looks kind of like similar, right? And then, okay, all those here, there's actually no similarity, but then here, okay, there is some similarity based on um, the Tanimoto scoring. And then another one would be this one that also, yeah, has a lot of rings. So yeah, maybe there is some similarity. Anyway, I think this is, this is just another um, example of, you know, how many different things you can actually do in Cytoscape besides just simple network visualization of GMPS elements. So now, as we just generated now an orthogonal network, 
you know i also want to quickly show you how we can like add different information on top because now here you can see in my uh, network list on the left actually when it created like this chemical similarity network it added a new network here in this list um, i can um, quickly rename this so we are not getting confused okay so this here would be my um tanimoto moto network okay and then the other one was my uh yeah test network anyway now maybe um both of them would be valuable for us and we perhaps want to um now you know fuse the two so what i could do here is okay let me see um under uh, tools there is this merge function and now i could say okay actually i want to merge these two networks all right okay let's merge the tanimoto network and here my um other edge table example and then saying uh merge them and now you will see that nicely i get now here a new network which is the net merged network from like these two and I think especially working with like yeah orthogonal data, let's say you want to explore um, MSM similarity metrics beyond um, cosine or modified cosine, you know, this could be a way that you could actually like make like this multi-layered uh, networks inside of Scheme. Okay, so now if I want to highlight uh, which edge is actually from what, again, I can go here to the style button, then toggle to edge. And now um, here under stroke color, you know, which before I think we um, said, uh, let's label this for friends. Um, I can now select here something like, uh, I don't know, what would it be? Um, here, uh, shared interaction, right? Shared interaction, and then I can say discrete. And then, yeah, similarity would be Tanimoto. So I can give this like, I don't know, let's say a blue color and then interacts with that was my um yeah just like the default from before so i could give this a red color and now you will see nicely okay within this network here this edge you know would be actually like the chemical um, similarity like the blue one and the red ones those would be this other edges so for example in ion identity molecular networking this would be a typical visualization, how you can differentiate between MS2 similarity um, and actually like correlation edges. All right. Okay. So far, so good. I think now hopefully you get like a nice uh, intro to like uh, Cytoscape and what you can do. But of course, I want to also show you how to actually import the GMPS elements, right? So what I'm going to quickly do now is I'm just going to destroy um, these collections here. So I have a fresh new um, space here in Cytoscape. So all the networks are gone now. All right. So now let's um, import a network from GMPS. And here the very good news is you don't even need to load this edge table and this node table individually like we just did. Um, but you can actually open a graph and L file that GMPS already outputs for you. So you don't have to deal with it. However, I want you to see how to do it like kind of like this old fashioned way, because I think this tells you more about the actual data structure we are visualizing here. All right, so let's go back to our test data, which you hopefully downloaded. And now under GMPS output, you know, there should be um, somewhere a graph and L file. Okay, this is here under GMPS Molecular Network, IIN, Collapse, GraphML, or um, here under the just GraphML. For now, I would say let's go for that because IIN that has a couple of other nuances and we want to just look at the, the molecular network for now. So yeah, here when I go into this folder, you will see this .graphML file and this is basically already a nicely formatted molecular network for you. And all you need to do now is track and drop this into Cytoscape here in this network field. And then, yeah, like magic, it will load this molecular network um, in for you. So now we can see, okay, this is actually like the data we, we processed last time and we can start exploring this, right? So now if I would toggle here to node table, I can see then 
for example, like the different names. So again, here it's a number which would correspond to the scan number from the MGF. But yeah, there is also a bunch of other information like the mass um, and so on. And somewhere there should also be um, a compound name. Let's see here. If I now click on this, I can sort actually um, the values in here and I can explore already the different molecules um, that were annotated in this, in this network journal. Okay, so now this is one way to, to like look at it, right? So if I, let's say find something interesting like vitamin K, then I can like click on like this row and say right click um, select notes from selected rows and then only this one note here would be selected now. Right, and then I can see already here slightly that it actually highlights this node in the network as yellow. But of course, if you have a very big network with tens of thousands of different spectra, um, this is hard. So an easy trick uh, to uh, go there quickly, once only one node is selected, is simply putting here this magnifying, uh, pressing this magnifying class button with the check mark, and then bam, it will jump right to it, right? And now we would know, okay, this year is actually vitamin K1. And oh, perhaps there is a couple of other molecules that are similar by either um, MSMS -MS similarity or an identity um, uh, coevolution profile and, and a defined uh, mass set. So again, now it becomes very useful if we if we start uh, mapping, you know, like this different interactions here through like the style button. Okay, and just like to repeat it. So now, okay, we have to remove this old uh, mapping here and now select um, a new, you know, category. And in our case, this would be edge type. And then um, through like this discrete mapping, I could um, differentiate between cosines. So this would be for MS, MS similarity and um, then MS1 annotation, which would be basically like the correlation score from an identity molecular network. Okay, so now I gave them uh, blue and red as colors, and then you can see nicely, oh, here, this interaction, you know, is actually uh, an identity. So this is perhaps like a co-alluding feature, maybe like an adduct or something. And then some other things, you know, appear to have either both or only MSMS similarity. Now, of course, the question is, okay, what, what could this be, right? And for us as mass spectrometrists, of course, like a very indicative information about like all like this putative different molecules in here um, is the molecular mass, right? So now if I toggle here under the style thing back to node, um, I could now change the label, you know, and instead of the name, which corresponds to the scan number, I could select something like precursor mass, you know, and then have this pass through mapper. And now, yeah, the label here would indicate um, basically what, what the mass is, right? So now, of course, we can also ask, okay, what is actually like the mass difference between those? And I can start now calculating 226 minus uh, 209 is 17 something. So perhaps this could be um, like an ammonium adduct, but of course, like I'm, I'm not so super fast um, calculating this all in my head. So why not visualizing this directly in the molecular network? So this I can do when I go back to edge and now um, here also under the style and I can add also for the edge as a label here. And then for example, select um, the mass difference as a, as a label category and then again, have to select path through mapping. And now magically, all the mass differences in my network will be displayed here. Okay, so this is nice. And here indeed, uh, we can see, oh, this was actually 17, so I was not too wrong. And perhaps this could be like an ammonium adduct. Then we have minus 18 here, which could you know correspond to water or, or whatsoever, so you name it. Okay, and then of course I can zoom out. I simply do this here with the uh, wheel of my mouse so I can navigate uh, pretty quickly to this network and yeah, like kind of look at like the different edge types, for example, uh, more systematically. Okay, 
So now, uh, what about abundance of like the different molecules between different sample sets? So if I go through like my note table, then hopefully somewhere, um, if I select um, a couple of notes, I will also see that there is um, some quantitative information. So there's the sum for like precursors, for example, but depending on a metadata file that may or may not was used, you know, I should also get here like this different GMPS groups. And now in our case, this here is some um, data from actually uh, a native metabolomics experiment where we post column and fuse different metals. And then we had either this condition on or off. And now the hypothesis could be that once we turn on metal infusion, you know, we should see um, like, yeah, like a higher uh, abundance of certain siderophores that actually represent like a siderophore bound to like a metal ring. So now I have like these two categories here, GMPS group no and GMPS group yes, which basically uh, stands for um, metal infusion, uh, yes or no, you know, and I can now eventually use like here, like this average peak areas that are displayed and uh, display like the differential abundance through a pie chart right on top of like the molecular network. All right, how are we gonna do that? Again, here through like the style button or like through the style field. So if I go to note, then um, there will be this field called paint. And if it's not uh, present here, then eventually I have to pull it in through this property button. If I go to property, then there's paint. Yeah, and then um, let's say custom paint, I can include like an image or chart. Let's see if this is somewhere. Um, yeah, perfect. So here's image chart, right? And now if I click into that, like there are like different chart options that I can actually select to be displayed on top of the notes. So for us, this is typically um, a pie chart, uh, but you could also use like this ring chart or there's some other like simple plots you can use. So feel free to play around with it. But for now, I would say, let's go with like the pie chart here. And what I can simply do is now, I can select different attribute categories from this table and then, um, yeah, like move them under selected columns. So again, this would be GMPS group, no, and GMPS group, yes. So I only have these two categories, but of course, depending on your experimental design, this could be, you know, different time points or different like taxa from like the different strains you work with or, or whatsoever. All right, and then uh, just gonna click apply. And now you will see already that in every node now, there is now a pie chart, you know, indicating this relative abundance. And now, well, if we again open this and here click on customize, then I will see that this first condition is green and maybe let me select something more um, meaningful from a color. And then the second one, let's make this red. And again, here under setup, like the first one would be no. So, which means, okay, if no metals in, are infused and it's blue, and if metals are infused and it's red, right? And now I can kind of like from my bird's eye perspective, you know, scroll through and look, oh, are there actually some nodes that are only red, right? So those I would only observe when I infuse metals. And maybe those could be, you know, like then some metal binding compounds. So this is really exciting. And I know that there should be at least some nodes that, that correspond to such a situation because, um, yeah, we mined this for quite a while. And yeah, one of these compounds is Yersinia back. So now how I can find this quickly, um, either I could um, scroll here to, again, my compound name, thing, sort by that and, you know, like then go through. But of course, if I have, I don't know, tens of thousands of different nodes, this might be also not super um, like fast. So what I would recommend you there is to actually make use of this other field here, um, this filter field. So if I go to, at the very left here under network and styles to this filter field, now, yeah, basically like this new window here opens and I can now add a new condition 
and I would use a column filter in which, for example, we could use the um, compound um, oh, where is it? Uh, compound name, you know, as a category. And now if I type in Yersinia Bactin or years, then da 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 da, it sorts automatically like this table for me. And now you can see, oh, there is actually already a bunch of like annotated stuff. So now um, as they are all selected, you know, they should be all highlighted in yellow in the network. So if I zoom out, oh, then nicely I see already here on the top left, um, there are these nodes. But again, if I can't see it right away, you know, I can always click um, on here this um, magnifying class and then should be brought in as close as possible. As now we have actually like nodes from multiple networks here. Um, of course, it's not gonna go to an individual one, but just to the few that actually like displays all. Um, but yeah, again, here on the top, I see already nicely that there is a bunch of, um, you know, like different derivatives that were highlighted. Um, so again, let's, uh, type this so we see here the yellow ones, you know, those would all be Yersinia backlinks. And now, just for me, for my exploration, because I don't want to lose them, you know, as they're like kind of like all uh, selected, I can just track and drop them like from here, you know, and as I select all of them at once, I can move them out um, all at once now. Okay, so now here there would be basically two clusters that well over a couple of other edges were also co um, co connected, but yeah, like I quickly um, can highlight, okay, what is what it might be interesting for me. So now how do I deal with this for my uh, later on data analysis? So when you're like exploring your knockout mutants, for example, and you find now a node here that is not present in your knockout, but present in your wild type, how do you save this for later? And again, there is a couple of really awesome solutions to this um, in Cytoscape. If I, for example, select here um, this nodes, you know, that might be like important for me. And if I go to network um, tab here, so I see like the list of networks, then I can simply go on file and say new network from selected nodes and selected edges. And what now should happen is that actually, like all like these nodes I just had selected, you know, these two networks, as well as some of their neighboring nodes here, you know, they are uh, now present in like this new network. And I can also rename this, you know, and say, okay, these are actually the Athenia Arctis, okay? And now there's a cool thing. Well, we have here, the ones on the left that had already this annotation, you know, so I know from like the, um, if I go here to the note table, then I know that from like their MSMS matching in GMPS, you know, those were um, stuff uh, identified as, as Yersinia bactins or, or different iron adducts. Um, but of course, there's also a bunch of other stuff that does not have any annotations, right? And these were like the neighboring nodes. So they were selected because I copied like the, the surrounding edges as well. And now of course, this could be cool because now if I organize them nicely, uh, maybe, you know, in your study, those could be like the unknown analogs that you just found that are related to the, some of the molecules that were identified. So now of course in, well, whatever study uh, we do, these are the things I immediately look for, right? Because those are kind of like, low hanging fruits of like accretive new, new compounds. All right, but most importantly, uh, I hope uh, you learned now how to kind of like extract this um, out of like a larger network, you know, and organize this for you for later. So now of course, this could be then something once I actually uh, nicely uh, rearranged like the notes here, which I can then, you know, copy into like a figure for my paper or whatsoever. Now also interestingly, you may have uh, guessed it already when we um, yeah, look at like the patterns, when we zoom in, we see nicely, okay, some of them, you know, are mainly red, others are like blue and red. So that means that they were present uh, both under um, 
like metal infusion and non-infusion conditions, but then yeah, like the ones that are only present under under metal infusion conditions. These might be really interesting because this might be like new um, add-ons, right? So like maybe here, if we, in addition to iron and copper, infused a couple of other metals in our mix, you know, maybe we found also like some more um, metal binding uh, specificity here. So yeah, I guess uh, this is all very exciting. You know, we're like kind of getting closer now to like putting this into like a paper. So now how do we get it out of cytoscape? So once we're kind of like happy with the style, you know, I would just like um, zoom in here and then uh, get like a nice view on it and kind of like orient them so that they're like most uh, like uh, likely be in a, in a final configuration. And then I would go to file and go to export. And now, um, yeah, like uh, basically export this network to an image. Now, if I say this, Okay, so yes, then um, like this new window here pops up and I can select uh, a couple of different formats like uh, JPEG, PDF, PNG, or SVG. So what I typically use is either PNG, this would be typically for like a, I don't know, PowerPoint presentations or something like that, or SVG, so it actually like exports this as a vector. So if I select this, then I can here browse and now select like a folder. Um, okay, let's go to here my download folder and then say, okay, example network. Okay, and then I can save this. And now the cool thing is as a vector, it basically exports this, this figure as kind of like individual elements. So now if I go to this file here, um, here example network, then, you know, if I track and drop this into Illustrator, um, then I could like, yeah, open this either here, or if you don't have Illustrator, you know, then you can use PowerPoint, for example, or any other like vector-based graphic program. And the cool thing is that in here, you know, like the different elements of this graphic are maintained as individual elements. So here I could now, I don't know, I'm still not happy with the color, you know, quickly, I don't know, like, change uh, the color here to something or uh, move this, you know, and, and, and kind of like handle a little bit with like the graphic uh, whatsoever. Um, but yeah, this is not about Illustrator, but rather about Cytoscape. So let's not get too deep in that. But the important take home message uh, for you is that you can like easily um, export this graphic views. Uh, some of the GMPS network viewer and especially like the GMPS dashboard also allow vector export, which I think is, is quite uh, essential for uh, making high quality um, figures. All right, uh, okay. So now uh, I showed you um, how to like create networks, how to import networks, how to search different like uh, compounds in there and how to like roughly um, like uh, export this as a, as a figure, you know, and how to change the style and, and, and customize this. So what about if we want to like add now uh, different information from example, for example, Sirius, right? So now here we have all like this MS2 based um, uh, spectral library matches and we can yeah like um, navigate here through it and, and find some annotations. However, if we would like look at like that full list, you know, then you will see quickly that actually most of the um, like, yeah, rows here, they don't have any annotations and most of them, you know, are unknowns. So here, of course, in silico tools like Sirius can like provide really helpful additional in information, uh, both on like the molecular formula level, for example, but also like on the class level, for example, through Canopus, or also uh, based on like uh, fragmentation trees that are matched to uh, um, uh, structural libraries, for example, from uh, CSI finger ID. So now how do we, how do we gonna like add this data in there? And there is a little trick uh, you need to know because unfortunately the serious outputs do not directly output like a, a column specifically with the scan number, but it's buried in a, in a larger string and yeah, like in the, last couple of minutes, I just want to briefly show you how to do that. So if you go to your uh, series output folder in the example data, 
then you will see that there is yeah, like cannabis um, formula summary, there's uh, compound identifications. So this would be a CSI finger ID. And then there's also like the formula identifications. And now if you open these, you will see that there is like, yeah, like a bunch of like different columns and a bunch of different categories. And one of them is, is quite important. And this is like this long string here um, at the end, which is called ID. So now you see that there is a number underscore series number. And now I tell you that this last number in that string is actually like the scan number. So this could be our key in order to like import this series table right into our molecular network. And now, okay, those of you who have done Excel magic before know that there is an easy way to um, yeah, like convert like a single um, column into multiple column with like defined delimiters, right? So this, uh, okay, I have to see, and apologies for my German um, Excel version, but if you go here and select like this last column and you go to data, then there should be this option of, um, somewhere uh, convert text into columns, right? And if I click on this, then this new window should pop up here. And then I can like select uh, delimit as an option and then simply specify underscore as a delimiter. And then what will happen is that I actually can split this string here in through, into three new columns, right? And then, I don't know, this could be, well, we can just delete this and then say, okay, this here is serious uh, scan, okay? And now we can just do like a quick uh, check and see if scan number 200, uh, 2,397 indeed uh, has the mass uh, 690, right? So which I see here, we can go back to Cytoscape. Um, now, okay. Uh, sort here quickly by uh, the scan number, in our case, shared name. And then this should be 2,397, 2,397. Okay, so this would be this one. Let's see if the mass fits 690.5066. Right. 5066. Okay, so indeed, this is the scan number. And in order to, to make things uh, simple for me, I'm just going to uh, um, quickly copy this here um, in to like the first row. So I immediately have the scan number as like column A. And now all I need to do is I uh, actually going to save this file right, so uh, that this information is maintained. And if you do the same, and now uh, close this, and now go to your network, and go to File, and Import, and Table from File, you know, then under Serious uh, Formula Identification, now the Serious Scan Number, which I just generated, you know, should appear as the first column, and the software already recognized this to be the key, you know, and now hopefully, if I say okay, then magically now all the serious information is actually added to our molecular network. And then, okay, now this list becomes uh, really long, but somewhere I hopefully should see now molecular formulas. Nice. So and now again, through my mapping under style, you know, I could simply select now the molecular formula as a label and then okay, on there. here um, the labels for the ones where it determines the molecular formula this can be displayed and of course the same way as with the serious outputs uh, I could do this now for other um, you know like annotations as long as I have like the scan number as as a key factor all right I think uh, that was pretty much all I wanted to show you today. Um, yeah, hopefully uh, you agree that Cytoscape is a pretty awesome tool and that you can do a lot of stuff. Obviously there's 
still a lot to explore for myself. So I always find like new tools and uh, it's really fun to, to explore um, and uh, work with it. Okay, so yeah, I guess with this uh, next week, uh, we're gonna actually do some more Excel magic and, and table juggling, and then perhaps also dive already into yeah, like doing this more systematically with some scripts and some like yeah, brief overview of multivariate stats. So yeah, thanks for for joining, and uh, hope to see you next time.